Accord. So picking up where we left off in Chapter 12, talking about Keynesian perspectives on the macroeconomy, we left off talking about why Keynes asserted that the short-run aggregate supply curve looks like this, right? And it's because of the coordination argument. We don't know how much our employees are willing to take, how much less they're willing to take. Uh, and then also, we don't know how much our producers are willing to take changes to price, right? Menu cost or increases in the uh, price of different items. And so as a result, the short run aggregate supply curve says that when we're at this YP, right, our full employment, when we're at our full employment, any kind of shift in our aggregate demand outwards is going to have only an impact on our price level with no impact on our output, right? So let's say we're at a situation where we start off at YP, and this is our aggregate demand, our initial aggregate demand, and this is the short run aggregate supply curve. And let's say that there's a recession, right? So a recession is modeled in a Keynesian model by a shift to the left of our aggregate demand such that we're now at a equilibrium Y1, an equilibrium one that corresponds to that same initial price level, but now results in less output for the economy. So in Keynes's mind, when you're experiencing a recession, the only thing you can do is to stimulate aggregate demand. And since the government can stimulate <laughs> aggregate demand, how? Remember, aggregate demand is nothing more than Y, which is nothing more than C plus I plus G plus NX, right? And so G is one of the components of this aggregate demand curve. And so if the government stimulates demand, then this aggregate demand is going to increase as well. And so if the government comes in, sees what's happening, and either cuts taxes or increases government spending, they can shift the aggregate demand, hopefully all the way back, but at least close to the initial aggregate demand. And we end up with E3 and Y2. So this kind of brings everything together of chapter 12. So when the intersection occurs at the flat portion of the short run aggregate supply curve, then that means there's only been a change in our real GDP. If the intersection occurs in the vertical portion of the short run aggregate supply, then that means there's only going to be a change in the price level. Okay. Now the question becomes, when the government goes ahead and does this, right, they're going to do that by increasing G. Let's say this deficit right here is 1 trillion US dollars, right? So if it's 1 trillion US dollars, how much are we going to increase G by? And the long and short of it is we're going to increase G by less than whatever that gap is. So if the if the gap right here, the recessionary gap is 1 trillion, then we're going to increase T by less than 1 trillion US dollars. And the reason for that is in the next part of chapter 12, which is talking about the expenditure multiplier.